I find myself once again having to talk about something I see on the forums that's a bit of a bugbear for me. And it's filament spool errors. And I see people saying that they got this brand of filament that's badly wound and now it's locked up and they're having endless problems with the thing and it's just making their life a living hell. Doesn't it seem odd though that it seems to be the same people who have the problems over and over again while other people using the same brand of filament don't seem to have those problems at all. And in this video I'm going to demonstrate that it's very unlikely how a spool could be wound in such a way that it can actually be caused to lock up. This is a metal lathe and I'm going to be using it to turn this spool and I'm going to rewind a spool onto it demonstrating how a spool is wound and to give you some idea of the mechanics behind this. It's a metal lathe and it's easily the most dangerous thing in this workshop. Okay, maybe top five. The ripsaw and angle grinders are pretty scary. And I'm not sure the coffee machine is on plotting against me either. But joking aside, this thing will hurt or kill you and not even slow down. So back to the task at hand. What am I going to be doing with this monster of a machine behind me? And more importantly, how am I going to do it? If you've read the description, you also probably know by now that I'm about to show you that spool errors are your own fault. But don't click that dislike button just yet. So for today, however, I'm going to be re-spooling one spool of filament onto another spool using the lathe to show you the mechanics of how this works and to hopefully dispel the notion that a spool can be wound incorrectly. I'll start by slowing the lathe right down. And yes, that large pulley is 3D printed. Also, this may shock you, it's PLA. It's been on there for nearly two years, but I digress. I'll be clamping one spool in the chuck and the second one will be on the spool holder, no more or less precarious than the average improvised spool holder out there. I'll take the tip of the filament and put it through the hole at the base of the spool and then make sure both can spin freely. I'll turn it by hand for the first few rotations and get it to hold and then power up the lathe. As the lathe rotates, it takes up the slack, then turns and the feeding roll starts turning. You'll see the first few layers are usually very neat and then they tend to go all over the place. If I guide them I might be able to get the spool really really neatly all the way but I suspect that that might cause further discussion on the matter even though it has no bearing on the result. The point I'm trying to make here and what I'm hoping you'll notice is that the filament is one continuous strand. There's no way for filament to cross over itself and therefore no way for a roll to be wound with a fault. This is not conjecture or speculation. The filament cannot magically disconnect and reconnect so it cannot tie itself in a knot. it. There's no denying that people end up with twisted filament. So how does it happen? Well, unfortunately, it's probably your fault. And it's not intentional, but it does happen. It certainly happened to me. What I want to show you now is how it happens and what you can do to maybe try and prevent it from causing a print failure. So when you get a spool of filament, it's usually held in place by one of two methods. Firstly and most popularly is probably that it's got just the filament through two holes in the side of the spool that holds it in place or sometimes they'll just put a little bit of tape around it and just stick it to the side so that it is on there and doesn't move. Both of these are fine, both of those work. 
but once you start printing you want to make sure that you've got that through here and if it's not through there keep a clothes peg or something and actually just pinch it to the side so it stays there the trick is to never let go of this tip or you might end up with a crossed over spool it happens very very quickly and once it's done you need to make sure that it isn't crossed over because otherwise you're going to get a lockup and that lockup isn't going to happen in the first five minutes of printing it's going to happen an hour down the line or even longer it depends on how tightly the spool is wound and how long it takes for it to lock up and actually cause the jam so always keep the filament under your control but accidents happen I've done it more times than I can count. Sometimes it's down to the spool simply being brittle because it's absorbed moisture over time and the spool cracks, breaks loose and winds back onto itself. And then you need to know how to recover that spool. In a word, carefully. So if the spool is tightly wound, and this usually happens when it's down to its sort of last quarter or third, and this is down to about the last 10%. You can see the coils are very neatly on top of each other, and where this is broken, it's actually just sitting right on top there. Can you see that? Right on top of it there. And there are a few loose coils here, but most of them are sitting quite tightly. And in a case like this, it's quite easy to go and pick it out, and then unwind it a bit and you just want to get those loose spools that were sitting on top there to wind off so that you've actually got it off there and then you are going to rewind the spool back on you're going to do it carefully and you're going to make sure it doesn't twist and when you get to the end put it through and your spool should be all right. This often happens when you're down in that sort of last quarter of the spool and it's down to the filament being around for a while, being out for a long time and having collected moisture over time that it becomes brittle, breaks and drops back onto there. Now, this is generally not critical. You're not gonna be starting a 20 hour print with a spool that's on its last you know, few hundred grams of printing. So be careful with it usually it's not going to be the end of the world if you do get a lock up this late stage of a spool's life. On a spool like this you'll see that there are quite a few loose rolls on here and this is what happens on a slightly newer roll. When it goes loose it'll jump around a bit and it can easily get entangled here. So when you want to correct this you want to make sure that you get all of those loose ones you want to get and you're going to unwind all of them and then once again you're going to rewind it back on slowly and get it so that it doesn't jam and doesn't sit in that same position again but you do want to make sure you get all of those loose ones off up to where it becomes nice and tight and at that point you should be past it keep a lookout make sure that the the coils are nice and neat underneath that and at that point you should be fine Okay, so with all that done, your spool's now recovered, you stick it back on the printer, you're going to print, no problem, let's go to bed, we'll see what our print looks like tomorrow. Mm, bad idea. You want to keep an eye on this thing. Now, I'm not saying you have to baby this thing through 10 hours of printing. Have your family bring your food and water and a pillow to sleep with because you can't sleep. What I'm saying is you want to check on it every couple of minutes so this is not for a print that you're going to leave overnight because if there is a jam further down and you haven't picked it up and you've got a monstrous extruder like a titan or a bontech that thing's going to pull until it stops coming if you're lucky the filament breaks at which point the spool's going to drop and it's going to crush whatever's underneath it and that's not great it's going to pull the spool holder off it's just not great so if you want to print overnight, maybe use a different spool, use a new spool, but this is the kind of thing where it's not the end of the world for a spool. Maybe start off with a short print. So do something short, let it print for half an hour to an hour and see what you get with it. If the spool's fine after that, reevaluate depending on how much you've printed, see what the spool looks like and take it from there. So that's all I've got to say about spool errors. I hope I've taught you something new today. If I haven't taught you anything and you knew this all along, at least I've given you something you can show your friends to prove to them that you know what you're talking about. In short, spool errors are not a mystery. It's not magic, 
certain things are just the way that they are and that's what's going to happen. So to end off with, like, subscribe, hit the bell, tell your friends. But more importantly, go make something. Have a nice day. Thank you.